Hey guys, welcome back to our fourth part of testing bed. In this episode, we will be talking about integration tests of a Spring Batch application by using test containers. So before going deep into our test, as always, I'm just going to give you a little introduction about test containers. So test containers is an open source project that allows developers to run Docker containers directly in their projects. So we are going to use the test containers in our uh, project, but before, let me just give you uh, once again a little bit concept of what kind of uh, tests okay, we can make easier by using test containers. So for example, the database, okay, the data access layer integration tests is one of them, and also application integration tests, which covers all the application, okay, which gives you more uh, not only coverage, but the integration of real components in your application and also UI acceptance tests and much more. If you remember guys, in the last video, we have tested our Spring Batch application that reads a file and writes into database. While testing the part that deals with database, we, we have used an in-memory database called by age 2 but it has some disadvantages, right? Because it's not pure as the same database vendor that we were uh, using in our real implementation, right? Because we were using MySQL and in our test we were using A2, which is in memory database. It's okay, it's, it's not a big deal, it's not bad, okay? But sometimes it requires the simulation of a real environment, okay? So for example, instead of using uh, H2, which sometimes you can, for example, I don't know, have some uh, syntax vendor uh, uh, um, differences, okay? I think we, we should always focus on using uh, the real or simulating the real environment, okay? So that's the reason I'm going to move to a test containers using a real, okay, a real container of my MySQL instead of using H2, okay? So this is a very nice uh, place where the test containers come into action, okay? As we are using Java and Spring Boot, it means that uh, using test containers, we will get support on our JUnit test class. The test containers will provide uh, an instance of database, so we are going to use it in our test. So guys, now we are here on our IntelliJ, and I think the first thing that we need to do is just in order to show you guys okay we are going to run our test first so okay we have two tests okay and everything is okay as we can see we have both of tests they are passing so we are using in memory database h2 okay so this is the dependency the first thing that we are going to do we are going to remove this dependency and let's reload our application and once again, let's run our test. So, okay, as we can see, now we have two tests, okay? Both of them have errors, okay? So, as we can see, it's complaining because we don't have, we, we, we didn't specify the data, uh, the data source, right? So now, the next thing that we are going to do, we're just going to the Maven repository you can go to the Maven repository or you can just go to test containers, okay, in their site. And you can go, for example, here in the section MySQL, okay? So we have database, MySQL modules, okay? And you can grab the, you can grab the dependency, the Maven dependency. But sometimes, you know, uh, some documentation, they are not using the latest, okay, versions. So in that order, I'm just going to use, okay, it's the same as we can see here for now. Well done, test containers. So I'm just going to use the dependency, okay, test containers, MySQL. But before, as we are using Java and JUnit, Jupyter in our case, you can use also JUnit 4. But the first thing that I will do is I'm just going to get the JUnit extension, okay, for our test container. So in that order, let me just get this dependency. And let's go here into our project and let's paste it here. So, and also, we need also, um, we need also the MySQL, 
okay? The JDBC, MySQL dependency. As I was telling you guys, you can go here, okay? You can follow the documentation and it will be the same, okay? So now let's go to our POM XML and let's paste, okay, the dependency. Let's just format this and let's reload our application. Okay, now that we have the test container extension like the JUnit extension, okay, JUnit Jupyter extension, as well as my SQL test container. Uh, the next thing that we are going to do is the simple stuff like creating here a new package. Let's call it by config, okay? Remember, we are dealing in our test package, okay? So, in here, let's create our class which will provide the containers for our tests. So, in that order, let's create a class. Let's call it by abstract container provider. So, having this class like that, we are going to add here this the annotation spring boot test. Okay, remember guys, not spring batch test, but spring boot test. So you can confuse and sometimes you are gonna get some exceptions. So having it like that, uh, the first thing that we need to do is to get the MySQL container. So we have the dependency. Now let's get the class. So in that order, you can just type, for example, MySQL container. Let's call it by MySQL container. Let's instantiate it. So as we are dealing with test container, remember that you need Docker in your machine. Okay, you need Docker in, on your machine. And I, I believe that all those videos, you are using Docker. If not, just pause and install Docker and come back. So now that we specify MySQL container, okay? Now we need to specify also the Docker image, okay? So, in our case, the Docker image will be, for example, my, let's call it by MySQL, okay, 8.0.24, where I get the image name. So, if you remember, guys, just go back, okay, here, on database, and just try to see, okay, where I can, where you can get the image and name. So, having it like that, I think, um, now, we have two stuffs. We can specify the database name or leave it like that, okay? So, for example, for now, let's just leave it like that. So, the next thing that we need to do is uh, we need to find a way that we can tell, okay, our Spring Boot application where it can find the containers. So, in that order, let's create here Let's first let's use the dynamic property source. Okay, the dynamic property source um, is an annotation that make it easier to set up properties from, uh, for example, um, for example, our containers, right? That we didn't uh, we didn't have it uh, on the Bootstrap. Okay, on the Spring Bootstrap, so it's very nice to set up some dependency that you that you are or, or some some uh, configurations that you are getting for somewhere. So in that order, let's use the di dynamic property source, and here let's create a, a new method. Okay, and let's call it by I think let's just call it by setup. So this is the place that we are going to set up our containers. As well, we need to add here the dynamic property registry. So this one. So having here our uh, setup method, now this is the place that we need to do the configuration of all our containers. In our case, we have now just uh, MySQL, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to start, okay, our container. So we have here the container, right? But need we need to start it. So how you, we can start the container using the test containers? It's very simple. We can just use the startables, okay? And we can use the deep start, which receives, as we, as we can see, uh, some stream or iterable collection of some uh, test containers, okay? Some containers. So in that order, let's use our MySQL con uh, container and let's get the, the, the join, okay? So the join is completable future and it doesn't matter for now. So we start 
our MySQL container, right? Now, the next thing that we need to do, we need to tell, okay, we need to tell, for example, uh, the application where it can get the, how can I say, like, for example, the, the URL, the password, the username, and so on, okay? So, this is where we are using the dynamic property registry, okay? So, we are going to add here all the properties. So, if we go back here on our application property, guys, we know that we need, okay, we have this property, Spring Data Source, URL, uh, and username, and password, and so on. So, this is what we are going to set it here in order to tell Spring, okay, Spring, if you want to get the data source URL, so get from, for example, here, MySQL, get URL, get JDBC URL, okay? As well as, for example, the username, okay, and password. So here we get the username, so we do the same. Remember, it's a method reference, okay? And we do also for the password. So, having it like that, we already told Spring application or Spring test, okay? So, you will use this URL or these properties when you start, okay, our test or whatever, wherever we are using, okay, this class. So, now, let's go back here on our sales info job config test class. And let's use, for example, here, let me just extend, okay, our abstract, abstract container provider, okay? So, guys, if you remember, we have this test failing, okay? Now, let's run, okay, the test, and let's see if it will pass, okay? So, guys, as you can see, let's just take a look here, okay? So, it will download, okay, all the, the containers. So, in our case, it will download, okay, the MySQL, okay, container, okay? So, it will take a little bit, okay, because it, uh, we need uh, the, the MySQL connection to be uh, available. And as we can see, we didn't specify the database name, okay, and it's using test. So, as well as username as, and password by default. And also, of course, you can later specify it, okay? So, as we can see now, right, our test, okay, uh, is passed, okay? We have uh, the, the, the build with success. So, uh, as you can see, guys, we, we can, for example, use test container in order to test to make the great or the real integration test because in our production, we will use MySQL, okay? So in our test, we are not mocking the database. We are using the real container of MySQL. So as I was telling you guys that we can keep playing with these configurations, for example, here, we can set this, the, the database name as well, okay? The same as we have in our application property. So just like this, okay? And also, for example, if you want to see if we are actually using this container and not H2 in memory database or something else, you can just, for example, go here, okay? And say, for example, here before, we can just use, for example, uh, let me see, the JDBC, we can get the data source, okay? And from the data source, we can get the connection and we can get the metadata okay so and now we can just log for example here log that info and let's just specify here let's get from our jdbc okay like from metadata and let's get the the url so remember in production we are using this okay which is running for example on the, the port uh, uh, uh 3306 Okay, but now if we, for example, run our test, let's go here and run our test once again. 
Of course, I could just use the Maven uh, test, but okay. So as we can see, guys, now we change. Okay, we 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 have changed it here. Okay, we set up the database name, and now it reflects here. Okay, as we can see, we have said okay, the database is sales info, and here we can see the sales info. And now let's wait because. Um, we, we, we need the connection to be uh, available, okay? We can improve it, okay? In the next videos, we will see how to improve it. But now, uh, let's just go. All right, so, and now I think we can just go here and try to find, for example, where we have the, yes, where we are logging, okay? So we are using the database and it's, it's telling us the, the, the URL, okay? As we can see, the JDBC, MySQL, localhost, and the sports, okay, and sales info. So this is the same, okay, the same, uh, uh, the same container, okay, that we just get started here on our abstract container provider, okay? So guys, this is very nice. Test containers is very powerful and very, uh, nice to use okay when you are doing integration tests this is for me the best approach the high level solution for your test should be by using test containers okay of course there are other approaches but for me this is the simulation of the real okay environment okay for our tests so hope that you enjoy in the next video we are going to deal with test container for kafka so let's go guys